Hi there, I'm Drew Badger, the world's number one English fluency guide, and today I'd like to know if you can solve this advanced English fluency puzzle. So a lot of people, because they don't understand the uh, the root meanings of maybe even basic verbs, they have a lot of trouble understanding things as they get to more difficult, uh, more complex uses of verbs, especially with phrasal verbs, where we're taking a verb and combining it with something else. So you might learn the word run, where you're just thinking of the idea of physically running, but if you understand Understand and expand that idea of run to include maybe something that's spinning around like an engine. You can also talk about time running, uh, like time running out or water running. So all of these different things, we're talking about the motion of something as opposed to only the idea of being able to run with your feet. So when we get to the root of what a verb actually means, it becomes much easier to understand. Now let's get into this kind of quiz that we have here. It's a really, it's a simple problem if you expand your understanding of what these things mean, but let's look at the screen right now, uh, and just we've got, we've got, let's see, a couple of words up here. We've got see, look, we've got get, and we've got something else. So we want to know what's the connecting thing here, uh, and so I wanted to talk, we'll talk kind of briefly about what this fluency puzzle is and see if you can think of the word that goes in that question mark space, and then we'll take that word and then we'll expand upon it to show you why it fits in that space. But first, let's just talk about the words that we can see. Looking at the difference between see and look, when you're seeing something, this is a more passive way of uh, maybe absorbing or you're receiving information. Uh, I could be looking in a particular direction, but then maybe I don't see something uh, because it's not really coming. I'm not receiving that idea. So look is a much more active thing. You're looking at something or you're watching a particular thing. It's you actively looking at something. But when you see something, maybe you notice something. So something it's more like coming into your eyes as opposed to your eyes going out and looking at that thing. So the connection connection between see and look is very similar like that. They're both talking about using your eyes to get some kind of information, but the looking at something is an active thing where you're looking around, you're actively going out and looking at something in particular, and then you're connecting with that information by seeing it. So the connection here, uh, and this is a very simple idea, but it's, uh, it's actually very important if you're trying to think about more uh, broader understandings or broader uses of these verbs. So looking again at the difference between look and see, look is a whole process of we're actively searching for something or we're actively paying attention to something, whereas C is just something at the moment right when something hits our field of vision and we notice it. So looking is more of a longer process and seeing is something that happens right at that moment. Now we can talk about maybe seeing a movie, but again, this is just trying to describe it as more of a passive thing as opposed to looking at a movie. You don't really look at a movie, you receive that information. So that's why we call it seeing. And we use the verb watch when we're talking about more actively looking at something for a long time. So that's why we talk about watching TV or watching a movie, but if we talk about the actual receiving of the information in a passive way, we're seeing a movie. So I saw a movie last week. I was watching a movie, but I was getting information as well. So as that information hit my eye and my brain, I was seeing that information. So what's the connection between those things and then get and the other verb that we have there as well? In the case of get, it's a lot like see. And this means we're receiving something at a particular moment and we're talking about the moment when that thing happens. It's a process, but it's more talking about the actual moment when we receive something. I could buy something, I could uh, get something for free from a friend of mine, or I could maybe find something, but it's only when it maybe touches my hand. So I'm like, maybe someone is throwing a baseball at me, uh, I'm throwing something up in the air and I catch it, and right as I catch it, I get that thing. But the thing that we're trying to translate if we want to make this connection in this puzzle, if get is like see, then what is look like? When we see something, we're talking about that moment, right, when we see something. And when we get something, we're talking about right at that moment when we receive that thing. And again, it doesn't matter how we do it, it doesn't matter how we see something, but we see it. We're talking about right at that moment as opposed to watching something which is more of a process. So in the same way, if you want to talk about receiving something, but the process you're talking about, like moving it from one place to another, this is take, to take something. 
So the answer to our uh, little quiz here, our little riddle or puzzle is take. So if you think about trying to some, maybe somebody taking a particular thing, we're talking about the entire process of something, not just the moment when you actually get something. As an example, I might take a test. So I'm experiencing a whole process of something. I'm in the middle of taking something. Now this is a more figurative way of understanding the verb to take, but I'm talking about something over a long period of time, to take something. So I'm taking a test, I'm in the middle of the test, but then at the end I get my score. So I get a particular score and I get it at that moment as opposed to describing a particular length of time. Now just to make sure you understand this, I want to go over a whole bunch of these different uses of take and help you understand how it's more of a process where we're talking about something traveling from one place to another, whether that is you moving or whether that is maybe a physical thing or something moving you. It doesn't really matter, but these are all examples of take and they're describing a process as opposed to something like get where we're talking about that instant of touching something, of receiving something. You can take the wheel when you're driving, so this means you're putting your hands on something and it shows you moving to that thing to hold that object. Now just thinking about very quickly the difference between taking someone's hand and holding someone's hand, these are really the same thing when you're talking about it in a conversational way, but the difference is actually quite interesting. If you hold someone's hand, typically you're describing actually like your hands are already connected to each other, you're holding hands, and whether you're moving like you're walking down the street with someone and you're holding hands with them, uh, you can just describe that the connection has already been made, so you're holding something in your hand. But if you take someone's hand, this means you move your hand up to that person and you actually grasp their hand. You move your hand to take their hand. So you're moving something and again, you're talking about the whole process, not just holding the hand, but actually moving from your location to their location. So it's the whole length of the process. So it's not just like getting someone's hand, you're taking someone's hand. In the same way, you can also take a seat. So instead of just sitting down, you're moving to a particular location and then you're holding that thing. So it's not just like getting a particular seat. When you get a seat, you're describing that one instance of now the seat is mine. So the seat is moved from somebody else's or it was maybe nobody else's seat, but it's mine now. But if I'm taking my seat, it means I'm standing up and we're describing me sitting down and then taking that thing. So it's the whole movement from in one position to something else. Or or I could do take out. So if I'm at a restaurant and I want to carry some food and go out of the restaurant with that, I am taking that food out. I'm moving that food with, you know, the intention to go outside of that restaurant, but it's talking about the whole experience of moving from one place to another. Now, I could be moving from a particular situation from one place to another, and that's why we talk about taking a plane or taking a taxi or taking a train. So I'm, I'm, like I'm the one being moved, but again, we're describing that whole, that whole situation. In the same way, we can also talk about time. We can talk about one person moving from one activity to another. So it took me three hours. It's saying like the span from one o'clock to four o'clock. It took me three hours to take my test, or it took me four hours to go swimming, or it took me 10 hours to do something. We're talking about the experience of something taking a particular amount of time. So I'm controlling something for a particular amount of time, but that's why we use take and not get in these instances. We're still holding something or controlling something, but get again only refers to that moment when you finally take possession of something. When you have possession and you're moving with that thing, that's when you take it. Now, I know some non-native speakers will have trouble understanding things like take a bath or take a test because in British English, people will often use different expressions like I'll have a bath as opposed to North American English where we will talk about taking a bath. Again, we're talking about the experience itself as opposed to like the, I mean, the meaning is basically there uh, and the same in a conversational way. But if you're really listening carefully or thinking about the difference between where the way we're explaining these two verbs, to have a bath just means you're kind of receiving that whole experience. But to take a bath means you're going through a whole experience from the first time you start the bath and then you go through and then you're, you're taking an experience. So that's why we describe something as like taking a bath or taking a trip or taking a test. All of these things are ways of describing a period of time elapsing, but you're instead of maybe controlling a physical thing, you're controlling an experience.
The whole point of this video is to get you to expand the way you think. So that way, when you're listening to a new verb or even a basic verb that you already know, you can begin thinking about different ways you might apply it, but that also changes your understanding of the verb itself. If you have enjoyed this video, do like it and do share this video with other people that also have maybe some trouble with their grammar or want to think more like native speakers and understand and improve uh, their use of grammar in general. And if you have a particular verb that maybe you don't know so well or you'd like to learn more about, do let me know in the comments section down below so I can take that uh, and possibly make a video. Maybe I'll even produce a series of videos out of this if people really find them interesting. But there really are so many things that you can take even something that's maybe sounding quite basic and it actually has a much more complicated and interesting usage or way of thinking about it. And if you can take this, then it will actually help you become a confident, fluent speaker much, much faster. To learn more about improving your grammar, especially if you have trouble understanding things or you really want to be able to speak more confidently, click on the link in this video to take our free fluency quiz. It's the real thing that will actually determine what you should be focusing on and it will give you specific advice just for your situation that will help you improve the worst thing, the most difficult thing that you struggle with. And we look forward to helping you with that at EnglishAnyone.com. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.